Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Haskell. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, hey, I have a question in question. Do you think learning Haskell will impress engineering managers during the interview process? No. Not, uh, honestly. I would say that most engineering managers won't even know what language you're using. Haskell is so obscure uh, that only true engineers or people who are within the functional space or who are very enthusiastic about languages with a fairly strong technical background will even know what it is because it simply is a, it for most uh, for most of the IT world it's just it's an obscure academic language used by only a select few people uh, even though it's a very powerful language and has a lot of benefits if you have the right use case most it's just not a mainstream language some will absolutely find that if it to be a curi curiosity or it might be conversation worthy if you say that you know Haskell or let's say that you want to do your code test in Haskell the thing the secret that I can give you on the other hand is that whenever you get to choose whatever language you want to write your code in for the code interview the choices that you make well Let's just say that uh, it's more than once I've had a manager send out a message to all the engineers in my com in my company asking, does anyone even know this language? I need someone to do this code review here. That's one of those things that they might not tell you, which I think is kind of fun. Because then, if you are a master Haskell developer, you might have solved the problem in a perfect fashion, uh, but the person who's reviewing the code is not the master of Haskell and that's going to affect their opinion about the thing that you're writing it's unfair it's unfair as all hell but that is the, the reality of the world it's uh, in, in <laughs> on the flip side on the other hand uh, you might it might benefit you uh, if you are being reviewed by someone who can't evaluate if you are writing really nice Haskell code well, then they might just assume that you're using Haskell and therefore you are good, as long as this thing is doing this, doing what it's supposed to be doing, because that's the thing that is really important here. The main thing, like in the fact that you're using Haskell or any, like literally any language that can even be remotely associated with uh, prestige, I've seen, I don't know how many uh, developers come in and try to do code challenges in different companies in C and the job is to do a REST call, parse some JSON and so forth and some of them have actually failed because they were hell bent on using C when they could have just used JavaScript and actually passed the interview. I'm not saying that they knew JavaScript, I'm just saying that if you're hell bent on using C and you're going to be a, de a, a, a web developer there's a little bit of a mismatch because nobody's going to be impressed by the fact that you fail to solve the problem in C or in Haskell. What matters is that, and at the end of the day, guys, you have to understand what the manager is interested in. Having it's uh, for me, it's a little bit the same thing. The di the difference between words and results. So when you want people to get inspired or buy into an idea or follow you if you're gonna be a leader or something like that you have to strike a balance between pretty words and results because if you only have results uh, results are always a very good thing people that's very much speaks to people but people if you are an uninspiring person it's hard for people to really buy into the thing that you're doing but on the other hand if you all you ever offer is words uh, at some point people are going to get frustrated because you're not bringing the results and you have the same thing here where the manager they're not th sure you might impress a few managers by knowing some really cool language but at the end of the day if, if, if that doesn't equate in if that doesn't translate into skills that they value it's going to be a really, really short-lived impre uh, uh, um, impression of you. you. You're going to get an initially good impression and then you're going to plummet immediately if you can't do the job. Because remember, then uh, unless you are trying to get a wor job doing Haskell, well, then it doesn't really matter 
if you know Haskell or not, it might be a little bit impressive to have few, in a few cases, but if you then fail and you can't do a, or you, let's say you pass the interview, but you actually do very poorly with the language that the company is using, because that is the thing. Remember, from the per perspective of the company and the perspective of the uh, hiring manager, they don't care that you know Casco. They care that you can do the job that they are hiring you to do. And that is going to require you to learn whatever language that they are using. It's just a good, I mean, as I said, it's just a prestige thing in some cases, or in many cases, it might just be conversation worthy. And in an extreme case, you can always, re always reflect on the fact that someone might feel that, well, if you, you, if you have used Haskell for this purpose, well, then you, you might not understand software development all that much. They might, I mean, sure, for a lot of people, Haskell is a quote unquote cool language, but you have to remember that some people might have a different opinion on that. They might just say, well, you're clearly using the wrong language that is more complicated than necessary to solve this problem when you could have done it in some other fashion. I'm going to just assume that you're an over engineer type of person who just makes things complicated to impress me because that is something that is very real. Something you should know is that the if you try to impress people way too much, or you're trying too hard to be this clever super developer, there are some people who will pick up on that and it will be turned into a negative thing. Just, just have that with you. So what I want you to take away from this is that most managers will not know what Haskell is unless they have a technical background or they, and even if they have a technical background, that doesn't necessarily mean that they know Haskell. They might have heard about it, but they're, it's not something that is all that mainstream. And in some cases, it's going to be conversation worthy because there are people who really do nerd out about functional programming and think that it's the coolest thing ever. And in that scenario, it this is definitely going to be something that is conversation worthy. In, but on the other hand, if you fail the technical interview, depending on what it is, let's say for the sake of argument that you get to do it in Haskell, well, Haskell does put a lot of different restrictions on you. If you're really, really good at Haskell, then that's fine. Or if you're getting a job doing Haskell, go for it. But it, it, you have to balance it. There's a risk that you will fail. And I've seen this happen many times with developers who are hell bent on either impressing people with their language choices. They're doing things in, I don't know, Elixir or C or whatever. They pick a language that they may not be 100% comfortable with or where they might not have the ability to solve the technical challenge that we will give them. And that is the thing that the company cares about because they're trying to assess your skill level fairly well at the very least as a software developer and unless it is f you're going to do Haskell development when you get into the company you're just you're, you're taking a risk to impress somebody when you what you should be focusing on is to actually be able to solve the problem that you are given and because once you have sol done that remember you're going to go into a company and you're going to have to learn another language or whatever and that is the thing that matters the, the employers don't care if you know Haskell if you can't do the w job that they hire you to do have a great day.